morning, everyone. Uh, my talk, the name is The Art of Growing a Startup, uh, but I will spare, because I don't consider myself an artist, I will spare you to sing. Um, and this could also be considered uh, a talk like how to transform a penguin in a window, or in windows. Because my company was acquired, as you know, by Microsoft, and we were used to use open source technologies uh, before that. Um, the, um, so, it's not just the art of growing, and I'll be talking about the specific case of Mobicon. So this is not uh, a receipt, or uh, it's what happened, and some of the things that I consider to be very important to be successful in these international markets, starting from Portugal. So who I am? My name is Carlos Oliveira. I'm 32 years old. I founded my company with 22 years when I was ending my last year in, in university, in University of Minho, in the north of Portugal. Uh, I'm married with Claudia, and I'm waiting for my uh, child that is arriving in March. So a lot of changes in the past years in my life. And about 10 years ago, I was talking, uh, it's literally 10 years ago with Murta, with others that uh, uh, I will show you a bit about, um, about mobility, about the future of technology, and, uh, and you'll understand how this happens. So... Success, and uh, I use very often this quote from Fernando Pessoa, success uh, consists in being successful, not in having the potential for success. I think that uh, all of us have the potential for success, and all of us can be successful, but we need to build um, the building there so that we, we, we can really say that that uh, field became a success. And really, I think that uh, uh, one important uh, aspect uh, to be successful is to be ambitious. And I know that you're in Portugal. Ambition, because of historical reasons, is not well rated in the rankings. But ambition, uh, if done in the right way, it's very powerful, because that's what uh, made that, uh, what we just heard about Silicon Valley happen. We need to be ambitious, ambitious. There are, of course, other important aspects of someone that wants to found a company and be successful. Hard work, uh, ambitions, I said. Um, a lot of faith, and faith means um, go and try, so fail and error. You, you, you can fail, in every day is a new challenge. So you need to do a lot of things to be successful, and it's not an easy, an easy thing. The other thing is to be um, uh, aware that risk exists, and we need to take risks. If we don't take risks, if we are in the commodity zone, we will never be uh, very successful, because we'll be just playing for average, as, as said. We need to try to be at the top of the top and, and the excellent. So, the birth of the startup. So, these are the four founders um, of Mobicom. Very different uh, people in the sense that at start, 10 years ago, we had different backgrounds. I was in university, probably uh, trending to be a researcher in the university. Murta was starting his spin-off from Sonai Group. Uh, and Tony Stor, a teacher in the university, Gestão. And McKinsey, ex McKinsey is starting to be also present in different uh, companies. And these four guys got together um, and start talking in cafes. So the start of this is not uh, something that uh, is uh, sought in a different way. You start talking in cafes. We were uh, on Saturday morning going to the cafe and talking about the future of the world and about technology. And we start to see that there was an opportunity, emerging opportunity in telcos. Um, we start to see a trend there. Uh, I was doing some research in the university at the time in an industry that didn't exist yet. There were some initial um, opportunities in the States. Um, but in Europe, this was non-existent. And uh, so in 1999, we decided that, does it make sense? And Murta was one of the guys that was pushing. Does it make sense, you guys, to be doing all these nice things um, in the university context? Um, and uh, we start, in the early stage, we said, well, does it make any sense to create a company? There is no industry. What, 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 what can happen? This is very risky. At a certain po moment in time, we decided we need to, to give that step. And I think that this is really the, the, the key point, is really to take the risk and really to say, let's go ahead and whatever happened will happen. Um, and uh, everything except that we can, we can surpass. So this was really what, what happened. And, for instance, for me at that time, it would be very easy. This was uh, the beginning or the middle of the bubble in Portugal, the IT bubble. It was really, really easy to just come and get a great salary, a great car, and do uh, an easy life for the beginning. 
the the challenge was really the reverse, and I think that this is where 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 um, risk. Uh, innovation come together. Uh, you need uh, and belief. You need to believe that you can do something to change the world, even if it's your micro world or your microcosm. So that's an, e an easy thing. So we, we just decided to start a company uh, in a cafe. We get the right uh, people, and I think that's one of the important things is that diversity when creating a company. So we had not only uh, I would say strong technological background, but we also had people that already had some experience in the industry that could leverage that in experience. And again, it's like the seeds that, uh, that were being taught to assist to fast uh, pace and, and, to, and a fast pace and to, to pass uh, some of the mistakes that uh, have been done in the past. And I was the only executive in the company from the founders, but their uh, uh, initial assistance was fundamental to guarantee that we could really have a vision, a strategy, and um, and that we could put that in place. And don't take these words, vision and strategy, as very as consultants or bullshit or things that are very heavy. No, this is really think what we believe, what what we want to achieve, and, and really that's how Mobicom uh, started. We wanted to be uh, playing in the first league of what would be the mobile computing space, and really to deliver innovative products to the market that would fulfill new needs that would appear. And we had this strong belief. And the belief was probably uh, one of the most important things that we had at the time because there was no, uh, unless these uh, bullshit consultant papers that you can read, that usually if you look them back 10 years ago, they, they all failed. But, and that's not where we sustained. We sustained it because we believe that this was a, a, a changing uh, moment in the industry. So, um, what were the Mobicom foundational uh, pillars? A very important one, innovation. Um, um, and now these words is sometimes meaningless, but at the time was not uh, as, uh, as used as today. But for us, this was key. We understood and we, our belief was that we, are, we will only be succeeding if we bring um, new products, new services to the market that will fulfill needs and potentially new, new needs um, in a different way. So uh, from day one, this was in our DNA. So we were not stopping at uh, Friday afternoons and say, now today let's stop and innovate. No, this was our daily uh, uh, charter and we wanted to use this in all the products. Even if we had a product or a service that we were developing for a customer that was pretty straightforward, we always want to bring something new and to challenge the customers to accept this innovation. And this was very important to guarantee that we had here in Portugal a test lab. We could put our products and services very easily and very quickly available to users, real users in the Portuguese market, that then when we would go international could be, would already have a, a trial, at least a trial phase in, in real operators. So innovation was key and has been key since then. Focus. Um, in, in Portugal, we, we usually think that we can do everything. We are a company in IT can do from ERPs to whatever, uh, because we have the talent, we have the technological skills, and we believe that we can do it. And probably we can, but we can, it's very, it will be very difficult to do it in a way that it scales and that we can be a company with international approach, because the, the, the importance of focus is it's not only about credibility, because credibility is important and you can only get credibility if you are really good or excellent in certain field and you can be for sure good in all the fields. But it's also very important because then you can specialize your, your teams and, and your people to think in a very specific market. Of course, over time, focus changes like lenses. In the early beginnings, our focus was mobile computing, which, by the way, in 2000 was a pretty good focus. But as the time was... Uh, Passing, this started not to be a focus, so we started having our own funnel that would focus our approach. So from being a horizontal player in the early beginning in mobile computing and uh, telco solutions or mobile services for mobile operators uh, and banks and retailers and utilities, we start focusing and in 2008 we were almost focusing only in mobile operators and with a product. So that's uh, uh, an important um, evolution. Evolution. So the third pillar was uh, internationalization. So our own market, as you've seen in the uh, in the map in the previous presentation, is a bit small. Even if uh, um, MINO represents or is the same size, 0.8 percent of US, uh, this is very small. And uh, and I, I, I so we need to start companies thinking internationally. If we think in our uh, own market, we are. Uh, um, 
our future will be uh, of that size, not bigger, because the market is not growing, on the contrary, is uh, in recession. More players are entering, so the cake needs to be shared with, uh, with more players, which means that we, we can grow a, a lot in here, and this is so it's fundamental that this, uh, this is in, in, your, in your charter when, when the companies are, are being uh, created, even if, and this is the case with Mobicom, even if in the early days you can do it, because then there are here things related to funding, uh, things related to the ability to reach these markets. So our uh, initial focus was really to say we want to be the leaders or one of the leaders in Portugal, be, be acknowledged by uh, our um, knowledge, know-how in this area, be successful, have the largest customers in Portugal, so that we can have a, a business card that we can show when we go outside of Portugal. And by the way, we many times think that having a customer like TMN or Vodafone or Optimus in this space is Vodafone Portugal, because Vodafone is, is it, everyone knows. It's not uh, a good uh, 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 visit card. That's, that's untrue. Uh, if you go to operators in Europe or even in the US, there is some value on this, because if you can then put them talk with, the, with this customer, and they can uh, report what, what happened. This has value. And sometimes you think, oh, uh, I, I won't use DMN as a referral because it's so small in Portugal, no one will, 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 will know about it. And, and that's not, not reality. And, and we've, we've seen this uh, over the years. So, as I was saying, we might not start with internationalization in day zero because we don't have the funds or the opportunity to start it, but this needs to be clearly in our roadmap, and we need to find ways to execute it over the years. Uh, one, one of the things that's um, uh, I, I believe is, is important is that when, when uh, Mobicom started, um, uh, we, um, okay. uh, when Mobicom started, um, we had 5,000 euros as initial seed capital. Um, we never um, had any additional funding, so we built a company that was sold to Microsoft, based on 5,000 euros. At the time, mil point, because there was no euro yet, and, and we built it. I don't think that uh, this is the best, uh, um, the best approach, because then you need to do some things um, uh, in a stepping stone way, and, and probably um, this can take more time than, than you could take if you had more funding. But this shows that it's possible to grow a company from Portugal, and by the way, it was not Portugal, it was Braga. I remember newspapers saying, uh, Braga Company does this, Braga Company does that. So how uh, strange it was that a company in Braga, it's not in Lisbon, it's in Braga, uh, was doing this kind of stuff. So, and this, that, that's why I say uh, in a funny way many times that we started our internationalization in the first day when we decided to build our company in Braga, near the University of Minho, and that was a key a point why we didn't uh, start in Porto or in Lisbon was because we wanted to be near a university that could provide us the right resources. And at the same time, this was the bubble. So if we'd come to Lisbon or Porto, we would have a very, very, uh, a very high difficulty in, in uh, hiring the talent that we needed. And uh, a company like Mobicom, at the end, is about the brains. So when we started, the only thing that we needed was some very cheap PCs with uh, four people coming out of the university. And... Uh, the brains working at 155,9% of speed so that we could really deliver the products that we wanted. So the everyday challenges um, for, 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 for companies uh, like ours were vision and management. And again, this is not the uh, consultant um, nice reporting, is that you need to, be, to have a vision to guarantee that you uh, have your troops completely aligned, that you have your people uh, willing to go and that they believe that you have a, an idea and that, that they should spend the time with you. And that's what we try to do in Mobicom, is really tell to the people that were joining our project that this was something that would be interesting for them and that they would have a bright future here and that they would be doing funny things, which is very, very important. Question on management. Uh, this is, these are things that you develop over time, so you don't start with all of this. Marketing and sales. Um, again, if you then don't, at certain point in time, you can start um, uh, in a random way to find customers in your networking, which is fundamental. But at certain moment in time, you really need to have a clear marketing and sales strategy. So you need to build 
your sales teams accordingly to the markets that you want to, to penetrate. You need to have the right marketing tools for your product. You need to have a lot of things in here. And this is not, uh, this is probably where um, some years after foundation we were spending a lot of our time here. It's really, now we have a product. And by the way, let's not do uh, how Americans do, which they sell PowerPoints. But let's not do what Portuguese people do, which is they just sell products that have 10 years of development because that's when they are great. So let's try to find here a, a balance and sell products that are good enough to be sold. No one, or it's very unlikely that people are buying uh, products today because of only the engineering, only because the product is perfect. No, they are buying products because they solve problems and because they have, uh, above all, the confidence that you as a company and you as an individual leading a company or selling the product um, are truly, truly believe that this can solve their problem. And so product and engineering is not less because it's, that it's I think that is probably the most important part when you have a startup and is your best marketing tool. If you have a product that works, that you can show to customers, that you can leave trials, and for us that's what works, then you, 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 can, you can pass a lot of, uh, of doors just because of this. And this was our case. Uh, our competition had, had much funnier marketing tools, much funnier PowerPoints, much funnier... Um, whatever, but we could leave it in the customer product that worked and solved the problem. And that, by the way, was leading edge, meaning that no competitor uh, had uh, a product like this. I just have one minute, so eight years after, so Mobicom, the sales were growing, not really like that, but the picture was nice, but they were growing. But we had an ambition, and they were growing because we had an ambition. We wanted to grow 100% per year. So, And you only can grow 100% per year if you say so. Otherwise, we'll grow 10 or 20 or 30, and maybe you are, fun, uh, you are good enough with that. But uh, if you don't put challenge to yourself and stretch uh, goals, you, you may be average or you may be so-so, but if you put stretch goals, you will reach them. Uh, of course, you need to be self-conscious and know your limits. So don't, be, uh, 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 don't, don't put goals that are uh, of other space. So we are doing internationally. We are being very successful uh, in Middle East. Um, and we were growing every year. Our sales, uh, eight years after the foundation of the company, were 60% um, out of Portugal. So, changing the landscape, and I think that this will be uh, very quick because my time is gone. So there was a change in the landscape. One day, or many days, we, we received some invitations to talk about potential acquisitions. We are not for sale, but one day a company called uh, Microsoft, a small company uh, uh, in Redmond, called us and said, hey guys, we'd like to talk with you guys. So, and how could this happen? How could Mobicom be bought by a giant like Microsoft being in the wrong place in Portugal? Uh, it's not, and even worse, in Braga. Hey guys, only priests there. So how could we, how could we be there? How could this happen? In, in, uh, Microsoft had bought a few companies in Europe. Uh, and by the way, in the short list for the acquisition at the end, uh, Microsoft had there uh, an Israeli company, a Seattle-based company, and a Portuguese company. So, uh, this was really strange, and I don't have much time to tell you now about this story, but I think that there was really um, the view that the technology was leading edge, that we were above uh, competition, that we could deliver it and execute it, which, is, uh, which was the proof. And the problem that we are not in one of the center of decisions of Microsoft was not a problem because the rest was so important for them that uh, they decided to, to acquire us and be accepted and we believe that this was great for our people. Um, our people now have international careers. They are delivering products to all of us that have a Windows phone, for instance. Um, we have an R&D center from Microsoft in Portugal. Uh, we have now the ability to assist in the creation of the, the strategy, the mobile strategy of a large worldwide player like Microsoft based uh, in Braga. Uh, not even in Lisbon, based in Braga. And this is really important. And almost to finalize, because my time is, is long gone, the importance of networking. This could happen because um, uh, there are many factors for that, but, uh, and it's not luck. <laughs> so, uh, the, the networking. For many years, me and some other people in the company were doing Lots of uh, uh, creating our networks with CEOs from other companies in Europe and in the US, with venture capitals, even if we were not really willing to have money at that time, uh, we were creating these, these, uh, these connections. 
um, partners are very important. We are getting credibility because we have partner agreements with HP or with Nokia or with others that were giving us not sales, but credibility, yes. And, uh, and so this was critical for us to be in the right point, in the right moment. And playing ahead, which is, it's like playing, uh, playing chess. When you do a move, you need to be thinking on the other all opportunities or options that you have, not in the next move, but in two moves ahead. And this is really uh, um, one important point. So, yes, we can. And again, to, to talk about the so what God wants man dreams that it is born. This means that we can build companies, technology companies from Portugal to the world. And my dream is that in five years, Many others have been bought by the Microsofts of the world, others have grown and skyrocket, which I believe that probably currently in the current context is more difficult to uh, uh, start up, to skyrocket and, st and sell 100 million. It's probably easier if we do the right thing to have more companies acquired and be consolidated and build technology and innovation from Portugal, which has uh, an important impact on the economy. So thank you very much, and um, this, is, this was my, my call. Thank you.